that we call the Beauty Brigade. <laughs> Beauty is more than skin deep. It is a multi-million dollar industry. It's absolutely staggering. Every year, the average American woman will go through 200 feet of lipstick, 61 pounds of foundation, 116 gallons of skin lotion, 104 jars of moisturizing cream, $3,500 in hair care products, 7,000 gallons of nail polish, and 200 miles of hair extensions. <laughs> My God, the average American woman is a real ugly old heifer. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> that's a lot of help she needs there. Okay. You, you asked me questions, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer them. Audience question time. Amy Smith from Newport Beach. Where are you? Hi, Amy. And here's your question. Roseanne, who from history would you want to be a guest on your show and why? And that would be Cleopatra because she owes me money. <laughs> and then we have Herman V. Alphen from Edith Holland, Netherlands. Edda? Edda? Ada. Ada. Yes. Um, who hot it mit yow? Thank you. Good. <laughs> Good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he says, can you say hello to all your fans in the Netherlands, especially to our town, Aid? Aid. Aid. Uh, Dag? Dag? Green grow it? <laughs> Hoy? Hoi. Hoi? Yeah. Who has it? Majorly. Okay. <laughs> Pretty good. We, we actually, you know, uh, studying the Dutch is one of my hobbies. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, may, and then Brett and Peter from Johannesburg, South Africa are here, too. Where are y'all? Hello. Your question, can we meet up later with you for a drink? <laughs> two South Africans, two British, and one Dutch. Two British, one Dutch. No. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a long way to have come. I'm glad you're here. Y'all you speak English? Yeah, oh, okay. It's too bad as I had the thing written down for your countries. Okay. Barbara Thomas from Muskegon, Mai. Michigan. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Barbara's question. I have two grown children, Roseanne, and I have decided to adopt a baby girl from China. Is 40 too old? Why would you want to adopt a 40-year-old baby? <laughs> <laughs> Just get a date. She can clean the house. <laughs> huh? She can clean them. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think it's great. It's a great thing that you're doing. Good for you. Are you going to go over there? And yes. That's good. A lot of people are doing that. It's Pretty awesome that you are. Thank you. Pretty nice woman. <laughs> Tiffany Jones from LA. Somebody from our own land. Where are you, Tiffany? Hi, Tiffany. How are you? <laughs> she says, here's your question, Tiffany. Is sex getting better for you or is it like passing the fridge while dieting? <laughs> the same thing. You just grab a little off the top shelf and check the expiration date. <laughs> well, you know, any show can do a lame makeover in the studio, ladies and gentlemen. But with the new millennium coming and everything, we've taken makeovers to the next level. So I have dispatched our team of tactical beauty experts directly to the home of one of our viewers. Here they are, traveling the country in their electric cars. The Beauty Brigade! of teacher Patty Baez. Their mission, 
to totally transform her within the next hour. Beauty Brigade, report for duty! I'm Yolanda, fashion technician. I'm Lindy, etiquette technician. I'm Edward, hair technician. I'm Tammy, nail technician. And I'm Alex, makeup technician. All right. <laughs> Knock on the door. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi, Hi. 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 Hi Patty. Hi. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Now, we know that you're the mother of a two-year-old son, and yes. you're a school teacher. Yes. And your boyfriend told us that you have not changed your look in the 12 years he's known you. <laughs> I'll kill him later, but he's right. I've had the same look. Are you pretty psyched? Ready to undergo this huge transformation? I am so psyched. I'm nervous, and I'm excited. All right, well, let's get wait. in there and do it, Patty. We'll be Sounds back with you in a little while. Take Sounds all those good, people in your house. Thanks. Good. Bye. Come on, Stay guys. In a while. my first guest, who is the most popular and gifted woman in the world. Housewife, investigative journalist, social anthropologist, megastar, and icon. Why, it could only be Dame Edna! I felt your new body. I did. And I, I liked what I felt. I'm going to call you Snake Hips, Roseanne. I am. Why would that Beautiful. be? Well, because you're so slim and gorgeous. Oh, aren't you nice? Oh, there wasn't you. very much for me to grip onto when I gave you a kiss. <laughs> well, that's because it's all in a girdle. Roseanne and I have known each other for quite a long time Many, now. many years, And we yes. haven't seen each other recently. No, we haven't. And lots of things have happened. You've tied the knot with another man. Yes, yeah, since you saw me, that's right. I oh, haven't seen you in like I seven years. I was worried about you. you were, there was a sadness <laughs> about you. <laughs> there was. There was not just a sadness. There was, there was a kind of rage about you, too. <laughs> And now you've found a lovely toy boy, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Little Benjamin, and it's beautiful. I'm very happy these days. And I can see it. I feel those vibes from you. Thank and you. And I'm a happy woman since my husband passed away. <laughs> I am, no, I don't mean that to sound cruel. I don't, because he was a wonderful person. And in the end, he peacefully passed away. And I've been free. I've not... I've had a lot of approaches. I've had a lot of offers because <laughs> I've still got my drives and juices. I have. <laughs> You're 65 years old, right? Oh, I don't know oh. where you get your information, darling. I'm sorry. I thought it says right here you're 65 years well, old. Well, it says all and sorts of silly things there. But I'm, aren't you... I'm, um, as, I'm as old as my tongue and a little older than my teeth. Think about that. <laughs> That's a little bit of an intellectual puzzle for our viewers. It is. Now, I was excited to hear that you actually received a letter from Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, you mustn't say his name. Why not? You mu no, because it's private. It's an emotional oh, matter. Sorry. This little man, he was in a movie about a sinking ship. I can't say any more than that. I'm sorry. Okay. And he's, he's been pursuing me. He's a little bit of a male moniker, as a matter of fact. And he's written to me a beautiful letter. Oh, well, please read it. It's, oh, it's, look, it's my tears, my moisture's on this letter. It says, 
Look, it's on Titanic writing paper. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? Don't you feel the chemistry between me and Roseanne? Don't you feel it? It says, it says, my dearest darling Edna, I absolutely must see you. He says, you be, you've been on my mind ever since that wonderful night we spent together at the Titanic party in London. He he, well, of course, I've met him before, but he doesn't know that we go to the same beauty parlour to have our eyelashes tinted. We do. But uh, he says, if only you'd been in that movie, you could have been my rose. And we could have both gone down together. Isn't that lovely? Isn't it? And he says, uh, it has me phrase things beautifully. He says, call me. He's, he says, call me any time. You teach me so much. <laughs> I mean, that, is, that is just one of the letters that I get from adorable young men. Isn't that wonderful? And you've married a younger person, yeah. little Ben. Little Ben. <laughs> but you know, he's 14 years younger than I am. Well, And I'll tell you, it's quite nice. It, it really is. is. It's you. I think we'll take a commercial and come back to talk about old men. Old men. Old men versus young men. After this commercial. What a topic. Don't go away. Isn't this exciting, viewers? <laughs> oh, Kim, it's a, it's a gorgeous little, it's a little intimate garment. <laughs> Yes, sir. It seems to have a bit of makeup on it, Kim. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> it's been worn, I think. <laughs> oh, it's even got lipstick on it, Kim. <laughs> Still, it's a nice thought. <laughs> Kim Basinger. Yes. That must have been before she had the baby. <laughs> That was before, that was before little Kim had the baby and she'd worn that undergarment in that film about the refrigerator. A raunchy little film, yes, really. very sexy. Yes, well, it was a little bit over the top in my view. I'm a bit moral, I think. <laughs> Call me old-fashioned, but I am. <laughs> and uh, I think there's enough raunch in public life without having it on television these days, don't you? I do, I have to agree. Don't you agree? I... Let's talk about your family, speaking of... I know it's kind of a touchy thing, but, you know, I think that there's so many things that you can share with us. You, you have a bit of a dysfunctional family, don't you? A bit of a dysfunctional family? My family is totally dysfunctional. It's tragic. I was at a meeting of Megastars Anonymous the other night, and... <laughs> as you know, because you were there, but I... I I don't want to break your anonymity, but I can say it on this show. We were at the meeting and I was qualifying really about my family. Yes. Because when you are a high achiever, very high profile, and let's face it, an attractive woman at the height of her powers, with drives and juices. As <laughs> and my gynecologist looked up the other day and told me that. Uh, he said, he said, <laughs> Well, he what did he say? What he I won't tell you what he I said. I feel you're trying to change the subject no, no, from your... No, I'm getting older the family. I <clears throat> think... Let's just go right to it. I'm a disappointment. I've let them along. down. You don't get along with any of your I children, don't. do you? It hasn't worked with them. My daughter, she lives with a Czechoslovakian tennis player of the same sex. <laughs> In fact, I'm expecting to see her on the Jerry Springer show any day of the week. <laughs> So your daughter is a lesbian? I didn't say that. I haven't definite proof of that. But she's, she's not gone along the path I would have hoped as a mother. <laughs> and you know, when she was a little girl and I'd change her little diapers and I'd hold her little ankles up and dust her with talc, I little knew that someone else would be doing something very, very similar to that. <laughs> In years to come, I'm not... I'm not going into it any further. But I'm, 
she's disappeared. My daughter is somewhere in America. She's changed her name. She disowns, she disowns me, Roseanne. Oh, my God. I want to find her, Valmay, that's her name. Valmay? <laughs> Valmay, if, if you're watching, call your mother. Call me. Call me. I won't say all is forgiven, it isn't. <laughs> but, call me, call me so I can punish you more. Please. All right, we're going to check in with our makeover. You know, we're doing oh, this. Oh, I did, honey. Yeah, I'm so upset. Please. I know we all have problems with our kids. I have problems with my kids. They oh, smoke. I love your daughters. They You've smoke been a good and they mother. Swear and I don't know. Smoking. I hated that cigar being mentioned in the report. Oh, please, you? honey. That's product placement, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that is product placement. Okay. But let's go check in with Patty. Please, let's check in with Patty. <laughs> Our makeover woman at her house. There she is. Say hello, Dame. Hi, hello, darling. Oh. Hi, Patty. It's Rosanna Hi. Dame. You haven't Hi. changed at all, but you will, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing to our Patty? Well, we, oh, we just cut off the back, as you can see. Now she's going to have a whole new look. We just got rid of that length. Look how pretty Patty see. is, though. Look. Oh, look how much nicer it's going to look already. Patty, are you cool about having all your hair cut off? I wasn't at first, but I am now. <laughs> She's got to have a saucy little do, don't you think, Dame Edna? Yes. A saucy little do that she doesn't have to mess with too much so she can get into, but you know, simple, work like in the morning. Yours. It's an easy style. Uh, this is a real perfect one for her because she has good thick hair. Now look, we added some little hair, a hair mascara on the sides to give her a little bit of quick coloring. And it's going to look late? really great. With a two-year-old, I need the fast. Yeah, thing. you need to be able to get out of that house quick. I, very quickly. In the morning. He'll fall in love with you all over again. Well, we're going to have him on later. He hasn't seen her as her boyfriend. We're going to bring him on at the end and Won't see. Won't that be a great moment in television? <laughs> I, I hope so. Let's talk about your beauty products, Dame. Oh, I don't mean to advertise. What Product I, placement. What I want to mention is, I have to say this, sorry, call me old-fashioned. But I'm doing a beautiful stage show in San Francisco at the Theatre on the Square. Oh. Fly to Frisco. Don't miss me. And I have a line of beauty products which are going to be in all the stores in America. And it's called Edna Care. Edna Care. It's beautiful. It's Her been... Majesty's Hypoallergenic it, yes, it's got de everything. Aging Cream. It's, it's a de aging, de -aging cream. cream. It's been. The Queen of England has used it. It hasn't. I've I mean, what beauty products have been tested on the Queen? Not too many. <laughs> <laughs> no, hardly any. So, this has a miracle... <laughs> now look, put your hand out. This, this has a miracle ingredient... Oh. This has a miracle ingredient... Oh, it's not... Oh, dear, it's... Well, it's just a sample. It's... <laughs> it's defective. Let me see if I can oh. do it. It's got, do you know what it, oh yes, that's what it's got in it now. Okay. Smell that. Mm. Oh, oh, can't you feel nice? your skin saying, thank you, Roseanne? <laughs> this, do you remember when you when you fell what over, is it? When what is it called? It's called, oh, I, it's called after shag lotion. <laughs> and it's, no. No, that means something else. What it does that mean? It should have said, it's a misprint, it should have said shave lotion. <laughs> but, you know, listen, please, please, when you were little, a long time ago, and when you were little, and you, when you fell over, yeah. and you grazed your knee, and your mother, did she ever lick a handkerchief and rub it on your little Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because mother's spit has a miracle ingredient. There is, an, there is an enzyme in your mother's spit. Now, my own mother, and she's a wonderful woman, my mother is in a maximum security twilight home in Australia, and she does very little. She drools a lot, though. And we have harnessed this. She's yielding... My mother is yielding about a barrel a day of drool. And we're putting it in these products. 
We are putting it in these products and it's having a miracle effect on people. And it's got genuine saliva from my own mother's lips. Mm. And uh, also, of course, my mother, if I had a little stain on my frock, my mother would lick a handkerchief and wipe it on the and frock. And it would remove stains too, huh? It would. I dare say Monica's mother has the same, has the same ability. Well, okay. It's possible. Okay. in a pouch. We'll be right back. Amongst her many, many other talents, she's also a gourmet chef. And today she's making a very special treat for us. It's called... Kangaroo casserole. It's an Australian delicacy. I am an Australian, incidentally. And these are sections of a kangaroo's tail. And it's this delicious part of the old roux. Now, these have all been chopped up. So I'm going to, first of all, put the chopped kangaroo tail straight into here. Into this bag. When you're handling raw kangaroo meat, Try not to get it under your rings. It's, it's, it's a little bit, you know, it, it well, yeah. starts smelling after a few weeks. So you people actually... You put it in the plastic You actually bag. eat kangaroo in Australia? Oh, we love it. It makes us, oh, it makes us hop around. Now, there we are. Okay. You have to do that to get the flour over the roux meat. So you're putting in the plain flour I'm over putting this. it in the plastic bag to get the flour over all those little bits of diced kangaroo meat. Mm -hmm. And we put it in the crock pot like that. Yeah. We add chopped onions. Okay. Mm. We add what the... was that, about two cups? Yes, okay. about two cups. And two <laughs> cups. <laughs> we add these chopped toma tomatoes. Two cups there. of those. Two cups okay. of those. Okay. These are all pre-chopped, as you might have noticed. Now, uh, that's for later in case people want seconds. Mind okay. You, it's, it's... We are going to serve the whole audience, aren't We're we? We're adding... Yes, everyone's going to have some of this scrummy old... It's called a... What's that's, that? That is... That's tomato ketchup. This is barbecue sauce. Mm -hmm. Scrummy. Mmm. It looks <laughs> delicious. <laughs> and Dad? this is a little soy sauce there. Okay. Lovely. Now you stir that around. All right. You, I certainly will. We're going to add some of this water. Lovely. You always add water in I the crock pot. A little bit of water because it's cooking for a very long time. Tenderizing that scrumptious roux tail. <laughs> <laughs> now. Uh, what we're going to do now, possums, is... Oh, yes, you've got to add a bit of um, thickener. We'll add some thickener. Okay. Oh, I've got to put that in the water first. You add the thickener, which is just... And the gravy mix. Mm -hmm. Add that in there. Give it a bit of a stir. That'll thicken it up. You should add this a little bit later, possums. Now, here we are. Oh, you can eat possums as well. <laughs> then you put that in there. Okay. And all you have to do is yeah. give your guests a few little drinks because it takes eight hours for this to get ready. <laughs> oh, there we are. And <laughs> now I'm going to put this away. And like all television chefs, I've cheated. I have cheated. They all do cheat. I haven't cheated as much as some because I brought this kangaroo over from Australia especially for the show. Oh, really? I <laughs> How kind! And this is the finished product. Oh. Smell that, Roseanne. Mmm. 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 <laughs> Not bad. It's delicious. I'm a, I'm a little afraid to eat it, though. It's real kangaroo meat. It and is. It's very, very nice. It's pure meat. And uh, it's like a stew, isn't it's, it? It's a, like a very superior stew. And I'm adding these little funny little suggestively shaped tomatoes there. <laughs> a few little garnishes, look. Yeah, it looks good. You know, I've got a natural artistry about me. You do. And you just add that on that. And I want you to taste this, darling. Do I have to? <laughs> okay. Now, get a close-up. Is it up warm? Close-up. Move in. Okay. In, in, I in. Guess I can only take the small. In further. <laughs> Is this kosher? Is kangaroo kosher? Could be. I mean, <laughs> I mean, they have a, a 
split hoof, the kangaroo. Well, when you just say kangarooban, think of it as kangarooban. <laughs> Kangarubenstein. <laughs> oh, it's just great. It is. <laughs> it's scrumptious. It is. It's actually good. It's Australia's gift to the United States of America, brought to me, brought by me, by Dame Edna, <laughs> and specially tried out on adorable Roseanne, who is one of my extra favourite people. And oh, I'd like thank to, you. On I think your behalf, be thank her for having us at her place. Oh, thank you. Let's pass it out. Yeah. Let's give it. <laughs> um. Along, dear. I will. With us. Here we are. to the Beauty Brigade. Oh, They're at the apartment of uh, Patty Baez. I can't wait, but audience, how did you like my kangaroo casserole? Scrumptious! Scrumptious, they said. <laughs> how well, spontaneous that here was. Here we go, Dame. We're going to see Patty, who says she has not changed her look in about 10 years. Isn't that sad? Oh. What's going on over there? <gasps> Who's How's that? my look? <laughs> oh, I like it. Do you? Uh, yeah. I like it too. It's great, oh. isn't it? It's really cute. <laughs> it's a beautiful Hi, Roseanne. Hi, you're the etiquette instructor. Yes, I am. Tell us what you're teaching Patty now. My first mission is to get rid of the gum. <laughs> Oh. Because it's not the best of manners to be chewing gum in a makeover or on national TV. Oh, no. Secondly, oh. <laughs> Secondly, we're going to be working on deportment, so that'll help her with her new, nice new frocks that she's going to be wearing. What did you say? Deportment? Yes. Deportment. And what posture. is that? You're going to send her out of the country? <laughs> what is deportment? That's deportation. Deportment is how you carry yourself. Deportation. Oh. Oh. How you carry yourself. Oh. Carry yourself. And posture is how you hold yourself. Posture, then. Uh huh. And so we're going to. Is that to one of the common mistakes of uh, American women? Is their bad deportment? It's one of yes. mine too. I get, yes. I tend to slump a little bit. <laughs> we all slump a little bit, but we can get out of the slumpiness by pulling it in internally, tucking in your tush, pulling in your, your stomach, holding your shoulders back, and having your head at a nice level. And it'll help you with your deportment and your posture. Well, and that will carry off the dress nicely. Well, that's nice. Have you got that down, Patty? I'm trying. <laughs> We've been practicing, and off we go to wardrobe. Okay. Oh. Now Hi, we're Roseanne. going. Tell us what you're doing. I'm going to take her. I'm going to take Patty out of the drab zone. She tends to wear the dead beige colors, mm. and you see her pretty red undertones and her dark hair. We want to get rid of this color for her. Okay. And I'm and I want to replace it with the hot new fall trend, which is the charcoal gray. Oh, which I think charcoal gray. It's all about gray. We'll bring back. That's I, nice. I knew yeah. charcoal grey would come back sooner or later. <laughs> Isn't it great? It, <laughs> it is great. Is that the outfit we're going to put Patty in? Yeah, this is our sexy surprise that we're going to save for later. Oh, All compliments of you, Rosie. Isn't it? <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to be sexy. I've never been sexy in my life. You are deep down, <laughs> darling. I hope so. First, let's say thank you and goodbye to Dame Edna. Thank you, my darling. Dear friend. And I want to say. Again, I'm going to be in San Francisco at the Theatre on the Square, and I've made a lot of new friends thanks yes, to you. you have. And don't forget, there are no strangers in this world, just friends you haven't met yet. Oh, thank you, Dave. <laughs> thank you, dear.
women, we all love working women. They work hard, they're interesting as hell, and Labor Day once a year is just not enough gratitude to show them. And in honor of them, my next segment is called Three Great Gals, where we celebrate women in the workplace. Today, we're saluting waitresses. You want tomato? You want uh, tomatoes and uh, onion on that? Um, no. On the side. Um, uh, these questions too hard for you? Do you want these on it or on the side? And, uh, yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Experiences I is that a, that's incredible. Let them hear it. Ninety years. <laughs> Marsha, this is. I want you to tell the story. Okay, tell the story about when the guy died. I was serving this customer, and all of a sudden he fell on the floor, and his lips turned blue. He he dropped dead in front of me. I turn around, the woman is screaming, where's my corned beef sandwich? I said, I have a dead man here. He's dead, call an ambulance. She said, look, he'll be dead a long time. Get me my corned beef sandwich. <laughs> True story, Roseanne. True story. New Yorkers, we love That's them. That's a New Yorker. <laughs> you ever eat off anybody's plate before you serve their food? Well, on Friday, sometime a crab will fall off the gumbo. <laughs> You know, I was a waitress for years and years. I, I, I don't know if I told you that. Ten years, so. Mm. Well, tell us what are the warning signs that you're not going to get a good tip. Can you read them before? I do. I do. So do you do anything like spit in their food or any like that? Well, no, no, no. Not really. You don't, you don't do anything to get even with them if you don't get a good tip? Come well, on! Sometimes oh. I follow them outside and I go, you forgot the rest of the tip. I follow them out the door, which I've done that too. That's a good one. I do. <laughs> you never forget a bad, bad tipper. tipper or a no tipper. That's right. You never. Because if a good tipper come in the door and a bad tipper come in the door, you're going to take care of your good tipper, but you're going to still give good service to the no tipper. I used to take stuff on the tray and go, you know, I was a cocktail waitress and go, It'll be six dollars for the drinks and another three dollars for me to take them off the tray and hand them to you. <laughs> I got fired. I was just finna ask that question. <laughs> yeah, right. If I got fired, mm -hmm. right. how do you tell, Kay? Well, unfortunately, I don't have any problem with bad tippers. I, whatever anybody leaves me, I'm grateful. I just twenty percent of the bill's oh, good for me. That's nice. <laughs> what about you? What's your biggest tip? It has to, it gets like $100. $100. Yeah, on that's what good. kind of a, what kind of a bill? Mm -hmm. I mean, how much of a bill did you get that big a tip on? You just bought a drink and tip me, honey. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Internal revenue is after all. I see. <laughs> so let's talk about the crappy government we got. That's a good subject. Because we want to hear the average person, um, their opinion. Let's talk about Clinton. What do you think's going on there? I think it all went on already. <laughs> yeah, but what do you think is going to happen? Are you nervous, or what do you think is going to happen? I don't think they're going to impeach him. No? No. I don't see why I they should. should. No. We don't impeach our kids if they do something wrong. He's well, a, he's not our he's kid. A, he's a bad boy. Well, he's a bad boy, boy, but that's no reason to do the things they're doing. Well, what do you think we should do to him? censure him. I mean, he did a terrible thing, right? right? Morally, it was wrong. 
It just disgusts me. You're just disgusted by the whole going up. And now they don't thing. even say nothing about the little old woman. Like she was a goody goody two shoe. She left LA to go there to do this. Premeditated. Premeditated. <laughs> now they don't even call her now. What are people saying about it in New York? What are New Yorkers saying? Oh, well, a lot of my customers are doing the same thing, so they, uh, they're all doing it. <laughs> they like that. They're all doing it. They're all doing it in New York, except he got uh, caught oh, with his boy. pants down, that's all. You know, they act like this is something new. Men been creeping ever since I was a little girl, and my <laughs> uncle was creeping on my front teeth. I mean, this ain't just happening. Well, yeah, but I mean, getting caught and everything like that, I mean, you know. Well, he was a little foolish he messing with something that young and didn't know no better. Right. <laughs> well, it isn't so much the young as it putting it in everybody's face. I don't need to know. I'm already 64 years old. I learned more about sex this week than I knew in my whole life. <laughs> don't need to know no more. And, and, and you know, so what's the man man that's doing all this? Kenneth Starr, the pr Okay, prosecutor. he's famous. Now, why don't he go home and shut up? <laughs> now, he right. done put all this stuff on the internet. You know, we do have a few good kids. Right. They didn't need to see detail oh, to yeah. detail. And I think he was right. wrong. It's one thing to get out to Clinton, but to destroy our youth, I yeah, don't believe in it. To have it everywhere. Right. And in I think it's outrageous they're thinking about putting those videos on. Oh, I know. Why it's... would anybody want to see Nobody that? Nobody cares. It doesn't get seem on. like a lot of people care. But I think the Nobody media but has... the holy and the, I've never seen so many sanctimony of people in my life. Well, you know he lied. Like they have never seen. <laughs> they were right. sinners. Show me somebody that's not cheating, is not lying. You mean, like, of course, if you're going to cheat, you're going to lie. Yeah, and you're going to steal. Not necessarily. <laughs> like, no? They, don't, they, be... they put them together, but I don't think so. Just because you do one thing just don't mean you're you going to do another. No, a cheater, a lie. And you don't lie? know why the circumstances he did a little something, something? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you know? Well, all right. She was just hipping Hillary up. <laughs> <laughs> Women's help other wives out. See, wives stop producing after a certain time. <laughs> so then they get some little tender and they help them out a little bit. And they go home just as happy. They happy. The woman happy. She ain't got to be bothered with they butts no more. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and he happy because they paying him some attention, so everybody's, everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. Just don't get caught. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, ladies. Don't go away. We're going to go back and see how our awesome makeover winner looks right after this commercial. over teacher Patty Baez in her own apartment in Mar Vista. Let's look at the before photo. Yeah. And now, let's see what she looks like now. Patty, come out. this is me <laughs> you look do you think you're gonna get too sexy for Mar Vista <laughs> <laughs> Beverly Hills here I come <laughs> you look beautiful Patty thank you what do you think your boyfriend's gonna say I have no idea <laughs> I I hope he'll be pleased but who knows he's unpredictable so well, I think he'll like it <laughs> oh you just look so great let's see your hair you. toss it a little bit <laughs> so beautiful look at Patty <laughs> Well, he's outside waiting, right? So we get to see his face when he gets the first look at you. Okay. Right? Bring him I'm in! Open. Here comes the boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I like it. You like it? Yeah. What do you think? She looks good. She looks pretty good, doesn't she? How long have you guys been together? Don't ask. 12 years. 
12 years? 12 years. And yes. you got a, you have a two-year-old kid? Yep, here yeah. he is right here. Aww. Hi, I don't think he recognizes me. <laughs> what do you think of your mama? You Does your mom? mama look pretty? Look at your mom. Do I look pretty? Who's this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Aww, he's like, Mama, I'm scared. <laughs> Does your mom look pretty? <laughs> Thank you at home for watching and you for being here.